Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast Radio. Well, now back to this morning's show. My final guest, Gavin Walsh, founder and CEO of iCabby, has good reason to celebrate this week as the taxi technology firm recently recorded half a billion bookings. Gavin joins me now to discuss the success of his business. Gavin, this week iCabby celebrated reaching over 500 million bookings, which is a phenomenal milestone for the business, which you started back in 2009. But iCabby wasn't your first business idea, so maybe you could tell us about some of your earlier ventures and what you learned from those experiences. My God, if I'm to go back, there's, uh, there's lots of these business ventures. And the reality of it is, even from, you know, I, I started off by trying to sell rabbits, um, which, uh, <laughs> which uh, did not go. Uh, uh, somebody told me that you could get a male and a female rabbit and, and make money selling them. So I, against the wishes of my parents, I got the male and fe- female rabbit. They did what rabbits do. And it turns out you can't sell them at all. So we ended up with the garden full of rabbits that one by one got taken down uh, by, by, by a fox that was in the area. But anyway, uh, from there I went on to do Christmas trees. I was at my own business from you know, uh, I've never really had a job. I'm probably the most unemployable person you'll ever speak to. But um, so, look, I've had women's fashion websites. I've had, uh, you know, I, I set up house cycles. I've had my own gardening business. I've, uh, I've had more business than I'll ever care to remember. But when I look back, really, they were they were really all quick book ideas. And uh, the difference with iCabby is what it turned out into really is is, is a proper business. So, remind us about what iCabby is and where the idea for this business came from. So, companies like Uber and Lyft are dominating the headlines, uh, massive disruptors um, that are raising billions in recent IPOs. But before these companies existed, for people to get from A to B, they used to ring the traditional local taxi company that hundreds of thousands of them exist all around the world. What we do is we offer these traditional taxi companies the tools that they need to compete and similar technologies so they can compete in the new age of mobility. Um, The idea came from back in 2009. I was on holidays in Portugal with my pregnant, who was my girlfriend at the time, and uh, we got lost out walking one day. And uh, we're badly lost, and I just got one of the first ever iPhones. And an idea struck me during the ordeal that it would be cool to be able to see live taxis on the map of my phone and then to be able to book one by pushing a button. So I got very excited about this idea and uh, um, I, I went to a family friend who became the CTO um, I found another friend who, um, who who joined, became the sales director and was responsible for commercials. And, you know, really from there, we, we you know, the idea kind of kept uh, growing and evolving. In 2012, we, we went fully into the business and um, it's been a fantastic success story since then. Now, over the past 10 years, there have been significant events which have contributed to the success which iCabby now enjoys. Perhaps the first of these occurred in 2011 when the business pivoted from a B2C model in order to pursue the B2B market. How did you identify that this was the direction which you needed to follow in order to achieve substantial growth? Yeah, so we started out like the Ubers, if you like, which is a B to C model where the customer just books a taxi and gets the nearest car. Um, we, we found it was we found that because it was an unmanaged service, uh, there was problems, you know, delivering a, a good customer experience. So what we did then is we we, we found uh, we, we've kind of done two models, one in Dublin and one down in Cork, and uh, with a small company called Free Phone Taxi, a great man down there uh, called John Roach. Um, I liked what we were doing, but we adapted technology, which was very primitive at the time, into uh, a dispatch system. So in Dublin, we ran a B2C model, which had no middleman. And in Cork, we ran a, a, we went through a small taxi company. So in Cork, it kind of worked a bit better because it was a managed service. So we decided then, uh, you know, we decided to kind of try and um, bring that model uh, the following year to, to see if that was going to work. And the aim then was to link together taxi companies through one technology and market them under the brand iCabby. So we launched in Dublin with one company, um, and that model kind of worked. We just didn't have enough coverage. Um, and then in 
kind of late 2011, we got approached by uh, quite a large company in Dublin who liked us. Uh, they were looking for they did a leak into their server room, and uh, so they were on one of the market leading systems from the UK, and and the leak into the server room, which was a traditional kind of hardware based solution, had brought down their system for six hours. And in a mission critical business like taxis, that just can't happen. So they liked the idea of the cloud based system that we had developed. And they, you know, they'd heard about this company. There was only three of us at the time, so we weren't really a company at the time. And they approached us, but they didn't like our model. So they didn't like the fact that if they gave us all the cars in Dublin, they might end up buying back work that was that they would have perceived as theirs in the first place. So we decided at that time to ditch all these to see aspirations. We made the decision that iCabby will never see the name, will never see the light of day, even though I love the name, I think it's a great name, and we're just fully B2B. Our business is developing systems and white label consumer apps, web bookers for taxi companies all over the world. Now, you subsequently launched a business in the UK, US, Canadian and Finnish markets. Can you provide us with an overview of your current position within these markets and a key to achieving scale in international territories? I think, um, you know, quite often people say for Irish companies, going to the UK, I don't know how Brexit will affect that, but you know, going to the UK is easy because it's like your home market. You can be, you can go visit any customer in a day, you know, in a matter of hours, nearly. So it's an easy market to access. Um, I think the culture and things like that are quite similar. So, um, you know, for us, it was an actual stepping stone. Ireland was a relatively small market force, albeit a good market force. Going into the UK market, uh, our system was seen as an enabler for growth by by. By, our, by large customers that we attracted. So um, in the UK, in kind of four years, we've gone up to, you know, I think we're 40% of the, the enterprise um, segment over there. So we've been very dominant going after those big companies. We then, uh, not really uh, through strategy, I would say, um, but through an inbound interest, uh, we, we, got, we, we, we got brought over uh, to the, U, the U.S., and a company in Alexandria called Yellow Cab, and uh, they'd been looking for solutions all over the world, and they took our solution before we were ready to give it to them as a truth. Um, but, you know, we, we, we kept getting a massive amount of interest in what we were doing, which was great. So it really was a roller coaster ride, and, we got, you know, the model was you get a big customer, and in the industry where a lot of people know each other, when you, when you build a good relationship with one you get a lot of inbound interest and you get a lot of people uh, uh, knocking on your door. So we went to the U.S., to Canada, uh, Finland, and we've signed our biggest ever fleet now in, in the Australia. So, um, you know, we're, we're, we're still growing. There's a lot of momentum with us. Uh, we, we plan to, um, to really multiply over the next few years. The business has been good. And how are you funding this international expansion? So we, we, we were we were 75% um, acquired by Group Reynolds uh, on the 8th of June last year. That was the efforts or the results of about two years of a funding effort, which is a very distracting period and a difficult period in the business. Um, but the result for us um, created a partnership, really, with the biggest car group in the world. Um, that's the Renault, Nissan, and Mitsubishi Alliance nine car brands uh, under the alliance and really that's given us that, that, that set us apart from all the competitors um, you know the options for traditional taxi companies in a heavily disrupted market are under funded they're under resourced and they're under ambitious in a lot of cases and I think you know our, our goal in finding the right partner was to tick those three boxes and that's what we've done so since then We've managed to, um, you know, we, we've, our staff numbers have gone from 80 up to 140. Our R&D team is at 76 people. Um, so I kind of think, I, I believe genuinely that we're finally set up to succeed. And that's something as CEO and um, CEO of a business that, you know, there's blood, sweat and tears gone into uh, every one of those half a billion bookings. Um, you know, that's something that uh, is, is really exciting for me because... You know, when you're bootstrapping a business for many years and I really, you know, struggle, you know, every month just trying to grow every every penny you make, throwing it back in, hiring more people, um, you know, to get a, a serious investor like Renault 
behind us um, it was an incredible achievement and something I'm incredibly proud of and something that is incredibly important for the taxi industry. And what was the core reason behind Renault making the decision to take a majority ownership share of your business, iCabby? Well, as it stands today, we've got 75,000 cars driving around the world. Um, each Every day, we're doing around 700,000 on average bookings a day. Uh, we've uh, as, as the announcement last last week, uh, we hit um, 500 million bookings, so half a billion bookings. So really, you know, the, the world is changing. Um, it's it's there's a revolution going on at the moment, and you know, with 75,000 cars, Reynolds sell cars, and you know, by investing in us, and it, what they're doing is they're making an investment into the, tr- the traditional taxi industry. And really, hopefully, that will be an opportunity for them to sell cars at some point. Now, just as iCabby has earned its reputation as a disruptor in what may have been called a lacklustre market, it appears that the taxi industry will experience significant disruption in the coming years as electric vehicles become more prominent. Is this something you're already preparing for? I find it very interesting. The EU signed up to, in 2005 to 20% reduction in CO2 emissions and um, by 2020. And, you know, we're a few months away from that deadline. Um, and the only thing that contributed to a decline really was the recession. I think as it stands, we're still adding 1% to it. There's massive fines coming next year. Uh, so really, the governments, lots of governments in, in Europe, signed up to these, um, you know, uh, these deadlines, but none of them did anything about it. In the UK, the only thing that's reducing it is, is less people are using coal. So these are really important things. Electric vehicles are, are, are you know, obviously will, cars and vehicles um, are producing, you know, many cubic tons of emissions into the, in, you know, every car that's on the road. So, and taxis are big contributors. So electric vehicles um, and are, are a big part of our strategy. And I, I think, you know, people care about the environment now. So it's something that gives us a real strategic purpose. Um, and a strategic you know, vision for where we need to go. And I do think uh, the disruptors, the, the bigger players like the Ubers, they're going to struggle to go there because they deal in volume and they deal in scale. And taxi companies will become niche players, but you know, they're, going to, they're going to appeal to the local user. And, and if that's electric and that's saving the environment, um, that's a good thing. And of course, Gavin, autonomous vehicles are also on the way. What impact do you see them having on the taxi industry over the next 10 to 15 years? Well, my, my, my father started Irish School of Motoring. He's, a, he's from Waterford in Dungarvan. And actually, the, 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 the trading name for the business is the farm he grew up called Coolnagower down in Waterford. And, um, you know, I, I, I have a pint with my father uh, every week and obviously Irish School of Motor has grown to be a great business teaching people to drive and they celebrated 50 years in business a couple of years ago which was a phenomenal milestone uh, but as I say to him over a pint I'm not sure he'll be celebrating another 50 years teaching people to drive because what is coming fast is this revolution in, in how we move around and the money that's going in and the billions that are going in every year from com- that, you know, companies that are backed by Google called you know, Waymo, Uber, every, all the car companies are investing heavily into autonomous cars and it's coming. Anybody who thinks it isn't is, uh, is, is not living in the real world. The question is not if, it's when. And you know, that's going to change everything because you know, one of the biggest you know, where, where accidents happen is driver distraction. You know, these cars won't get distracted. Now, it's not going to happen with the click of a finger where, you know, tomorrow there's going to be just autonomous cars all over. You know, how it's adopted and how it emerges in different markets is going to be the interesting part. But if you look back to, there's a great picture of Man, a street in Manhattan in, in 1904 uh, that showed, you know, lots of horse and carts. And then there's the same street in 1914, and it's just all automobiles, and there's no horse and carts. Same thing is going to happen with autonomous cars. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, it's funny when I have conversations with people that don't believe it's going to happen. Um, I, I, you know, when you see the rate of change in technology, and, and, and can I also add, I've been in one. So I've been into Renault's uh, self-driving uh, uh, car, but 
you know, it's not coming anytime soon. It's probably, you know, before we see them in the roads in, in Ireland actually driving, they'll be on fixed route roads. They're not going to be that intelligent to start. But, it, it, you know, the early stage ones will be in Ireland in, in 10 years. There was one done, done, uh, put into the docks already. Literally, it's like a moving little train going up and down to the, the three arenas. So it doesn't do much, um, but they are coming. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I've, I've four young kids, and you know, the question is, will they ever learn to drive? And Gavin, finally, given the success that you've enjoyed with iCabby, what advice do you have for those listeners who just have a business idea or are just about to start their entrepreneurial journey? <laughs> well, 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 as my dad always said to me, there's a lot to be said for going home at five o'clock and, and, it, and, and whatever you're doing is being, becoming somebody else's problem. Uh, you know... I, I think it needs to be in you, and like people, people, uh, I, you know, people start businesses, and they all think that they're going to be Mark Zuckerberg, and in, in, in a year's time, it doesn't happen. It probably doesn't like happen uh, like that for him. But it's a very, very difficult road. It's a very challenging road. Um, you know, people are going to embark on building a business, particularly if they're after a high growth business and and out to achieve big things. They, they really have to sacrifice their life. Um, that's something that can wear you down. Um, you know, you can have you're gonna have some of the best days of your life, but you're gonna have some of the worst days of your life and most fail. So it's a really difficult road, um, that uh is not for everybody. And and you know, there seems to be a bit of a, a hype around start up businesses and, and entrepreneurship. For me, I, I don't think there ever would have been a different ro- road. Um and I'm very happy that I can say um, I've, I've had I've had reasonably good success, uh, but there's many days where I might not, you know it might not have gone my way. So there's a lot of luck involved. So be ready for the most challenging times of your life, and make sure that you're ready for it. And if you have a family, that they're ready for it because it will impact on everybody. Well, if you've just tuned in, that was Gavin Walsh from iCabby, and on behalf of the team here at Business Matters, I would like to congratulate Gavin on this fantastic milestone, and I'm sure we'll be hearing about the one billion booking very, very soon. We're almost at closing time here now again at Business Matters, but before we go, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my production team. My guests for their contribution, and especially you as always for listening. Join me again next Saturday morning when we'll have more for the world of business. But until then, have a profitable week. Southeast Radio's Business Matters with Carl Fitzpatrick. Southeast.